Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome if you're here for the first time. My name is Amelia and um, today is, um, it's a good day for me. I actually feel a lot better than I've been feeling the last couple of days. But um, as you guys know, I did um, develop pneumonia in um, my left lung and um, I'm still a little, you know, coughing a little bit um, due to that, but I am overall feeling um, better. So um, today's topic is going to be a little bit different. Today we're going to, it's still about the, my VSG journey, but today I'm actually going to be talking about the mental slash emotional side of having VSG surgery. And um before we get started, um, I do want to say go ahead and like the video, share the video, and um, if you um, have been enjoying my content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that um, you'll be notified, um, you know, when I create new content or whenever I decide to put out new videos, you got to make sure you hit the notification bell, um, and it um, when you hit the notification bell, make sure that you click all because if you don't click all you won't get all of the notifications you'll only get like some notifications so um go ahead and make sure you do that and if you haven't been receiving notifications go ahead and unsubscribe and then resubscribe so it'll kind of like um it'll reset so that you'll be getting your notifications but um i do appreciate everybody that has been supporting me throughout um this journey and you guys it has not been easy um it's not like i don't understand why people feel like it's the easy way out because this is definitely not um an easy journey but uh, i do believe that in the end it'll all be worth it but um so let's go ahead and get into what uh, we're going to be talking well what i'm going to be talking about today so um just to tell you a little bit by like to set up my mindset on um having the surgery and exactly how long i have been contemplating on having um uh, having the surgery um in 2009 around right about 2009 um i had just moved back to mississippi from ohio and I um, had been talking to my mom about having the surgery. We had actually been um, talking together about having the surgery. And um, I kind of had flirted with the idea. I did go ahead and um, I sought out a doctor. I also joined a support group um, in 2009 and I started attending um, the meetings for, you know, to be, you know, beginning to prepare yourself for uh, bariatric surgery. However, I could not grasp the idea of like the changes that would happen to my body. And like, I wasn't prepared for that. And so I kind of like bagged out because every time I thought about um, I, you know, I was a full figured woman or whatever. And when I thought about having, um, you know, losing such a drastic amount of weight in a short period of time, it kind of scared me. And I'm like, I really don't want to look sickly. I don't want like skin hanging all on my body, you know, and I'm like, just let me keep my fit. <laughs> I'm good. Like I'm good. I didn't have any health issues. I didn't have, um, you know, any, any problems with my weight at the time. I kind of wanted to be a little neater, a little slimmer, but I didn't like, I've never had a desire to be skinny, but I didn't, um, I didn't have any problems with my weight. So I kind of begged that. I was like, you know what? No, just give me my fat. Let me keep it. And you know, whatever. So I begged out, stopped going to the meetings, didn't try to pursue getting the surgery or anything. So, um, we're going to fast forward to 2020. We're going to fast forward. So this, at this time, the last time I had visited this, this, um, the last time I visited 
this idea was 12 years ago because that was in 2009. This is um, 2020 um, that I restarted, you know, started back thinking about going through the process. So there were issues with my health that kind of pushed me you know, into thinking, you know, this this might be a good time to go ahead and get this done. I started having um, back pains. I had joint pains. I had um, started having issues with high blood pressure. I started having, um, I did have a diabetes um, scare where my doctor, um, they did my labs like for several months straight. And then she was like, your A1C is actually going up. And uh, at this point, you are pre-diabetic and I'm going to put you on this medication. And so it was metformin. And that was like, it was like really scary for me. And um, I had talked to a couple of people. I talked to my doctor. I talked to a couple of people. And I was like, oh, metformin may be a good thing. You know, a lot of people lose a lot of weight on metformin and get themselves, you know, back together in their um, glucose levels and stuff, level out on metformin. So metformin may be a good thing. So I was like, okay, so I'm, I'll go ahead and try this metformin. So I started taking the metformin. And a couple of days into taking the metformin, I started to feel um, really druggish. I started to feel... Um, just sick and really weak and frail like i i just felt like not myself and um i remember one day i was leaving the house to take my daughter to work and um my son was upstairs and i was going down like outside of my home there's like three stairs so i was going down the stairs and my son was outside upstairs on the balcony he was like um mom and so when I turned around to see what he wanted, the, I was so dizzy to, I literally had to like grab the rail. I almost went down. And I'm like, at that point, I'm like, this, it's got to be this metformin. I had been on the couch all day. I could not get off the couch. I was from the bathroom to the couch, from the bathroom to the couch. That's it. The same day. And I'm like, this is, this is not normal. And I started thinking, I'm like, the only thing that I've done differently outside of my norm is the metformin. And so I stopped taking it. After that day, I stopped taking it. And so, um, it took a fact, maybe two or three days and, it went away. I started to feel myself again. You know, I started to feel normal again. And I had to tell my doctor, I was like, no, this metformin, you know, it's not for me or whatever. So I chose um, against my, <laughs> against what my doctor said, I chose not to take the metformin. And so this was like um, a few months um, before I actually started seeing my doctor for bariatric surgery. So, um, at that point, it was, it was a deciding factor at that point. Um, I was like, something got to be done about, about my weight. Whew. So it was like the health issues. Um, then I had, um, an issue with my gallbladder. I got real sick or like right after Thanksgiving, 2020, I got sick and um, you guys, I thought I was going to die. I, if you've never had an issue with your gallbladder, baby, you blessed. I thought I was going to die. I was so sick. You guys, it's literally worse than having a baby. The pain is worse than having a baby. I was so sick. I thought I was going to die. I was so sick that I could not even call on the name of Jesus. I was like, I, I had to think Jesus. I had to think Jesus with tears rolling down my face. And that was scary. It was scary. And that may have, it may have, it may have not had anything to do with um, weight or um, anything like that, but it happened in the process of me making my decision. It happened. So um, I ended up having to have surgery, get my gallbladder um, taken out, which was um, 
I feel like a good thing um, in the end. Um, I had I went through that. So right after that is when I really decided to, okay, I got to do something about this weight. So I started researching, which I had already been researching um, prior to this, like starting maybe around October, um, October-ish. I had started researching doctors. Um, I seen some doctors um, that I really liked at um, Northside Hospital here in Atlanta. Um, and I, you know, I tried to contact them, but it was kind of hard. They wouldn't return calls. Then when the nurse did return the call, I couldn't get the information that I needed. And it was just kind of like a hassle. So um, I kept looking, I kept looking at different um, hospitals and their reviews on the surgeries. And I stumbled upon my doctor um, that I have now, which is, um, I don't know if I'll disclose the doctor. I may, I don't know. Um, let me think about it. I may before the end of the video. But um, anyway, I decided on the doctor that I have um, now. I actually started going to see um, the doctor. I started, I made my first appointment. I went in, we had a conversation. Um, I found out that I was a good candidate for the surgery and it was basically like full speed ahead. So while getting um, in the process, you all know if you're, um, anywhere in the process of having uh, bariatric surgery done, you know that there is a process. If you're um, using your insurance to pay for the surgery, there's a process. So um, you have to go through several um, different steps. You have to see a pulmonologist, a cardiologist. A guy, you have to go through a sleep study. You have to go to um, a nutritionist. You have to go to through psych evaluations. There are um, a minimum of two psych evaluations, but depending on what they find, you may have to, uh, or what their determination is you may have to go through more, but I only had to do the initial two um, psych evaluations. But um, getting while 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 getting um, everything done to be approved through my insurance, I was also getting everything done on the other hand that would prepare me. I'm thinking mentally for what I'm about to go through. Because um, I didn't want to to not prepare myself mentally for such a um, life changing um, event or a life changing procedure that I had to actually endure. I, I did not want to fail to prepare myself mentally because I feel like if I if I prepare myself mentally, then I'll be able to handle anything that comes along after um, the surgery, you know, has taken place and after the changes in your body and after, you know, just whatever problems that arise, I felt like if I prepare myself fully prior to surgery, then I'll be able to withstand after surgery. <sighs> well... I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I thought I was fully prepared. I thought I was. I researched. I listened to, I, I did my support groups. I listened to other people's stories. I listened to other people's horror stories. I listened to other people's wins and their, um, their, their uh, accomplishments in VSG surgery. And I tried to balance everything out okay the good and the bad and the ugly you know what if this happened what okay i'll be able to handle this if this happened because i'm mentally prepared i know that there's a possibility that this may happen no mm -mm. Mm -mm. no it don't work like that it don't work like that. I thought it I thought it would, but it don't actually work like that. Because there are gonna be times that arise that you're gonna feel like, okay, I'm gonna tell you the first time that I knew that 
I'm not going to say my preparation was in vain because it wasn't, but I'm going to tell you the first time that reality set in and I know that like I'm really in, in this thing. Okay. So two weeks, this wouldn't even be, this wouldn't even be the, the first time would probably be the shocker will probably be in the hospital, which I'm going to tell you about second, but let, first, let me tell you about two weeks prior. Okay. So you know you have to do your two-week um, pre-op diet. Okay, I'm good. I'm good up until the two-week pre-op diet. I'm mentally ready. I'm geared up. I'm happy about the uh, my decision that I've made. I'm happy that I've accomplished everything that I've accomplished so far as to getting approved for the surgery. I got my date, and I'm, I'm happy. I'm just waiting to start my two-week pre-op diet. Okay, so somewhere in my mind, I I forgot. Like I, I literally forgot like the two week the two week pre op diet, and it's like a, a, a like maybe three days into the two week pre op diet that I should have been already on the diet, and I wasn't because I was freaking out. I was literally freaking out you guys i was freaking out and i'm not a big eater i've never been a big eater but i started eating right before my two-week pre-op diet i started eating it's like anxiety set in and for some reason i just started to get jittery and i started eating everything that i felt like i could have ate I'm eating everything, like stuff that I don't even really eat and eating more often during the day than I usually eat because on a normal basis prior to surgery, I only ate like once a day. And then when I ate that once a day, it may have been like three, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock. Like it's like in the afternoons late when I eat. So I'm starting to um just eat everything and I'm knowing like I'm 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 like I'm conscious to the to the fact that I'm eating everything and I'm like what is really going on I'm I'm constantly questioning myself what is going on why are you eating why are you eating all of this food and I'm just eating I'm eating I'm eating and I don't know if it was the idea of that after surgery I wouldn't be able to eat anymore that kind of like pushed me into that but I just started eating and I had to get a grasp on myself. And when I got that grasp on myself, like, girl, like, it went on for, like, th about three or four days. I was like, girl, what are you doing? And um, once I got a hold of myself, that's when I realized, oh, my God, I'm three days in to my two-week pre-op diet. And now I felt like, oh, my goodness, I'm not going to lose enough weight before surgery because like my doctor did not give me a set weight to lose before surgery. He only told me to lose as much as I could possibly lose due to the fact that um, the surgery he, that he has to go in and hold up the liver in order to get to the stomach to do what he needs to do. So you don't want an enlarged liver or over fatty liver going into this surgery um, because it's going to cause complications and it's going to prolong the surgery time. So I'm knowing all of this. And so, um, then I started to panic. Then I'm like, girl, you got to get yourself together. You got to get yourself together. So I got myself together, got on my two week, um, diet. And I started, um, I started just going ham on my two, two week going in on my two week diet. Whatever he told me to do, I was doing. The first couple of days, um, first I did have my last meal. I had my last meal, um, the, um, that's, I think that same day, I was like, okay, you know what? Um, I'm going to cook this fish. I had some catfish. I love fried catfish. I cooked, um, cooked my catfish and I ate it. I enjoyed it with some seafood gumbo. It was my last meal. And then I went in, um, I had kind of gathered myself and I went in on my two week diet. I did very well on my two week diet. I must say I, um, started a couple of days with just the protein shakes and, 
um, one meal a day, which consisted of about four to six ounces of protein and then some type of sauteed or steamed green. And so I did that for a couple of days, um, a few days. And then the last, um, the last three days of the pre-op diet, I actually did all liquids, no, um, protein, um, as in a meat or no greens or anything like that. I just did all liquids and I had, um, in a week in about four days, I had actually lost, uh, around 10, 11 pounds, uh, before surgery. So I felt okay. I was like, okay, I didn't, I didn't go too far, but, um, I was kind of like off my game, but I didn't allow myself to go too far. So, um, I came back from that. So that was like, whew. okay. So got to the hospital. Well, before the hospital, my nerves kicked in again and I could not go to sleep the night before surgery. Um, I could not go to sleep. Um, and I'm just up, like I'm literally just up. And knowing I needed to be sleep, they changed my surgery time two days before surgery. Um, it was supposed to be at um, 10 and I was supposed to get there at eight. But two days before surgery, they called me, bumped up my time. So now my surgery is at seven and I have to be there at five. So I'm woke. I can't go to sleep. My nerves bad. I'm like, I didn't feel like um, any regret or trying to back out or anything like that. It was just the anxiousness of, I guess, knowing that it was about to happen the next day. And I could not go to sleep for nothing in this world. I could not go to sleep. And then when I did finally go to sleep, probably around 3 or 4 um, a.m., I overslept overslept, jump up 5.15, I think. I can't remember, but however, I was late, you guys. To get the accurate time, go back and look at the video of my surgery day, and I told you, but I was late. I was late, and I was panicky, and I'm like, um, you know, they probably rescheduled me because I was late. I was like late. And uh, I think it was like 15 minutes or more that I was late. And I just kind of felt like they weren't going to go through with the surgery. But I, I just did my best to get up, get showered with my um, my pre-op prep and go. And I just literally ran out the door. The hospital is right here by my house, really close, which that was like a blessing because I was able to get there like in 0 0.2 seconds. So I got there. When I got there, I was checking in and everything. And I kind of, you know, calmed myself down because the nurse came out and she was like, okay, we're going to come back and get you in just a few minutes. They did not turn me around. So that was good. So I'm still feeling good at that point. I, you know, nerves back on point, still feeling good. I wake up from surgery. This is the first time I felt like I was losing it. You guys, I woke up in excruciating pain, excruciating pain in my back and in my stomach. I woke up in excruciating pain, which I was not expecting. And the reason that I wasn't expecting that because the surgery is done laparoscopic. Okay. I had just previously had a laparoscopic, uh, laparoscopic surgery in January. So I did good with that surgery. I woke up good, came home good, minimum amount of pain. I was good. So I'm feeling like this surgery is going to be basically the same. You know, it'll be a breeze. I'm going to wake up. They inject your incision sites with medications before you're out during surgery. You wake up, you good. The medicine lasts about four days. You good. By the time the pain sets in, you're in your healing process. I'm thinking, I'm going to be good. No, I woke up in excruciating pain. Whew. That was when I, I, I honestly, I was in so much pain, you guys. The first thought that crossed my mind was 
Why in the world did I do this to me? Who in their right mind would make a decision, a conscience decision to do this to themselves? That's the way I felt. Immediately upon waking the first time, coming from up on the anesthesia, that, those were my thoughts. I was in that much pain and I was totally, unex, un, I was un, um, not expecting it. So I just let them know I was in pain. And I, I, at that point, I'm having regrets. I'm like, oh my God, you know, I'm like, I didn't know that it was going to be like this. You know, why, why would I just agree to do this to myself? And um, I let them know I was in pain. And they brought pain meds. Pain meds were not doing any good. I eventually had to get it, get up. I had to get up out the bed. My back was hurting so bad. I had to uh, actually get up out the bed right after surgery. They were like, "No, you need to lay down. You need you need, you're not even you know fully un from under anesthesia." I was like, "No, like this my back. <laughs> I know." <coughs> <clears throat> I know <clears throat> what to do for my back. My back is hurting. I need to get up. So they allowed me to stand up. I stood up on the side of the bed. I was able to like stretch, pop my back. I don't know if it was the position that I was laying in or what. So I was able to pop my back and um and to, to sit up for a while. And then I got back um in the bed. At that point, I did start to feel a little better uh, pain-wise. Then, headache kick in. Blood pressure skyrocket. So, at this point, I'm like, what did I do? What on earth did I do? And I'm scared because my blood pressure is actually... 170 something over like 118 or something like that. Like my blood pressure was high. So I'm scared at this point because now I'm thinking I chose to have this surgery. I chose to do this to myself. My blood pressure spiking. If I have a stroke, I've done this to myself. And so the weight of that kicked in. And so now it's like, I'm sitting there quietly and I'm just really like questioning myself. Like, was this worth it? Like, was it worth it? Or should I have just went a different, uh, you know, a different route? Was it worth it? And I'm trying not to upset myself because my blood pressure is high. I'm trying to, make sure that I'm calm, make sure, you know, that I don't do anything that cause my blood pressure to spike higher that sends me into a stroke, heart attack. <sighs> Nothing's working. They're instead of giving me morphine for pain, constantly coming in, giving me pain medications for my headache, um, Tylenol, Motrin, they alternating it. And then, before I went in, the nurse downstairs um, at the pre-op appointment told me, she said, this was like a couple of days before my uh, surgery. She said, have you ever had migraines? I said, yes, I've dealt with migraines a good little bit of my life. Yes. She said, okay, the anesthesia has a possibility to onset your migraines. So if you at the first inkling of you of you thinking that there might be a migraine coming on let the nurse know they have medication to give to you to offset your migraine thank you good to know i'm telling them i'm calling the nurse i'm like bzz, bzz, like hey i got a migraine coming on you know I need something. I got a migraine coming on. I feel it. You know, I'm I'm getting nauseated. I feel it. You know, if you've ever had a migraine and, and you've been dealing with migraines, you know when you have a migraine coming on. 
they tell me they don't know what I'm talking about. They don't know what I'm talking about. There's nothing they can give me. So at that point, I'm like getting more upset. So I'm I'm trying to calm myself down. I just breathe, you know, take a few minutes, breathing, calming myself down. And I'm like, okay, so they don't know what I'm talking about. I stayed in pain for a day, that rest of that day, the whole day, because my doctor left that morning. I had already saw him. He left that morning and I didn't see him till the next morning. So I stayed in pain all that day, all night till the following morning. They constantly coming in, morphine, pumping me up, morphine, morphine, morphine. He want more morphine, morphine, morphine. My doctor get there the next morning. He say, no, 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 no. I called the charge nurse in the middle of the night. I called the charge nurse about 3 a.m. I said, I can't take this anymore. I've been had a headache and I have been, um, you know, nauseated and sick and I can't deal with this. Y'all have to call my doctor, get something to, uh, to get rid of this headache. So the charge nurse ended up bringing me um, some more because I was letting them know I said, I take blood pressure med medication and lodipine. Um, the last time I had surgery, my blood pressure skyrocketed. They were able to come in and give me a second pill. My doctor told me to take a second pill to bring my blood pressure down, that it was okay if I took a second pill in one day, if my blood pressure was up that high. They refused to give me a second pill. So I ended up calling the charge nurse in the middle of the night, asking them, you know, for that second pill. So he ended up calling my doctor, getting it okay, and I had a second pill. So it still didn't stop the headaches. I was still, you know, feeling bad. Blood pressure was not coming down. So the next morning when my doctor get there, he say, it's the morphine. So they pumping me up on morphine ever since I got to my room. And the morphine is what actually was causing the headache and my blood pressure to skyrocket. So as soon as I stopped, you know, I start refusing the morphine, then that's when things start to turn around for me. So then I started to feel a little better because I was like, I was feeling like I'm, I'm in stroke heart attack zone, you know, and that's, that's dangerous. I'm not trying to be out here. I, I chose to have the surgery so that I can live, so that I can live and be more healthier. I did not, um, I was not expecting to, 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 um, to come out like dragging one side of my body from a stroke or not being able to walk or talk again from, you know, a stroke or having a heart attack and having to go through all of that. That, that wasn't in the plan. So once we got all of that um, taken care of, I started to kind of calm myself back down again and started to feel, you know, okay. The pain was actually okay. Um, it was... Um, it was doable, you know, doable. It wasn't like excruciating pain anymore. It was only like bad when I first woke up from, um, from my surgery. So, um, <sighs> I didn't eat too much, uh, well, drink too much liquids in the hospital. They gave me a little bit. Um, I did a couple of ounces in a, um, one of those little small cups. I did a couple of ounces. But um, I felt like it was, you know, okay, you have to do the swallow test and, you know, make sure you can feel it going down and know, you know, what you're feeling and all of that. We did that. So upon um, getting home, this is when the, um, the, the emotional and um, mental, mental part start to really, uh, aspects of it start to really take over. So... I get home and my doctor is saying you need 48 ounces of liquids, at least 68 ounces of protein, at least a day, 60 grams of protein, at least a day. So I'm like, okay, got it. Got it. I had no idea that it was going to be so difficult for me to, um, to get it down. I did not, I didn't know. I knew that, you know, I was going to be limited to the amount of, um, you know, food or liquids that I could take in. Like I knew that I had already put my rep, you know, wrap my mind around that. I knew that, but, um, 
actually being in it is something different. And I'm, I'm telling you, it's something different. I actually um, started with the protein. I started with the protein. My doctor had already told me in the hospital, dilute your protein with skim milk. It gives you an extra, if you do eight ounces of skim milk with your protein shake, it gives you an extra eight grams of um, protein. So eight ounces of skim milk gives you eight grams of protein. So I was like, got it. Everything they tell me, I'm like, got it. Cause I'm trying to do what it is I need to do to get, you know, the results that I want to get. So, um, I'm like, yeah, got it. So got my boo, stop at the store, get me some skim milk on the way. Got my skim milk, mixed my shake, start to drink my shake. I'm realizing I can't get this shake down. I can't get it down. I'm taking sips, but this is a this is a tall glass, as you can see. And I'm drinking protein shake now. And um it's a lot. And so I'm sipping and it's just it's not like I can't swallow it. It's thick and even even though I diluted it, it's thick and I can't swallow it. And I'm not a milk drinker, so that's like I'm not a milkshake eater, so that's something else. And um, I'm not real big on sweets. There's something else. So I'm in a dilemma now because I can't get my protein shake down. I'm not even thinking about um, my fluids. I'm thinking about protein because the whole while I'm thinking about my hair falling out, um, a lot of people have issues with their face. I haven't had any issues yet. Knock on wood. I haven't had any issues yet, but, um, I'm trying to, I'm thinking that the protein is the most important aspect. So I'm trying to get the protein. However, I'm not being able to swallow the protein. I literally had one shake all, all day and I didn't finish the shake. So the second day I had another shake all day. I didn't finish the shake. So at that point I started to get dehydrated and I'm still feeling like, you know, it's okay. I got this. My doctor already told me this may happen. I may have to go in for fluids. You know, it's okay. It's, it's you know, it's normal. It's okay. So I go and get the fluids. I was very dehydrated. I almost passed out trying to take a shower. And um, it was just, it was a lot. My girls had to come in and try to help me dress and get dried off. It was, um, it was, it, it was something. And the whole while I'm like, okay, I still got it. You know, it's, this is normal. I just got to get fluids. So I waited till the next morning to call my doctor. They got me right in to get fluids. So I get the fluids, started to feel great. Um, the next day, still can't get my protein like I supposed to be getting it in. But they, my nurse had told me, you know, try not to concentrate on the protein and concentrate on your liquids. Because if you can get your liquids in, at least you won't be dehydrated. So I'm like, okay, good. So for a day or two, I did pretty good. I um, went and got me some crushed ice from the racetrack down the street. And I'm drinking water because I, I can't drink the power A zero. I can't drink the um I can't drink the um the protein, the clear protein shakes. I can't drink those. And um I'm just not doing good. I'm trying to get anything down. So at this point I'm like basically surviving off of nothing. And I'm drinking, I'm drink, I'm I'm sipping, I'm sipping, not drinking, I'm sipping. And I'm not getting anywhere with um with my my water. Um, but then um I did notice when I went out, I went out during the day, uh, me and my friend guy, we went out, and um I don't know if it was just the 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 um atmosphere of being out or what, but um I went out and I was able to like constantly sip my water and I got my water down. I was like, woo, good, I got my water down. So I got the water down and I noticed, you know, I was like, the water went down 
easier than anything else that I've been trying to in ingest. So I got the water down and then I tried to go back to the protein shake and I just could not get it down. It's just thick and I just couldn't get it down. So I can feel myself the next day feeling like I'm getting dehydrated again. I started to feel sluggish, um, started to get like a headache. I started to feel like tired again. And then I started to panic and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be dehydrated again. I'm going to have to go back in for fluids. And I'm like, I can't let this happen to myself. So I started trying to drink um, again. And you guys, this is where I feel like the biggest mental, emotional part of it is because even though you prepare yourself and you know, um, I'm, I'm going to have to sip throughout the day in order to get things down, or I'm going to have to, um, like now that I'm eating pureed, pureed foods, it's like, I'm going to have to take four bites an hour in order to get food down. Like, you know, that going into surgery, but to actually be in it and having to live a day in that life, it's. Um, I don't have words. Like I don't have words and I'm, I'm trying to adjust myself. Like that's where I am now. I'm trying to adjust myself. I'm trying to get comfortable in myself and knowing that this is just something that I got to do, um, in order to, um, you know, to keep myself afloat. I got to do this. But I, it's like, I'm thinking like, I really had no idea. Like I'm a person that don't eat all day. So if I'm a person that don't eat all day and I only drink if I'm thirsty and when I'm thirsty, then I just drink it and go on about my business. So if this is the life I've been living and now I'm, I'm, I'm transformed to a person that got to sip and eat all day long in order to get it down. It is 1.52 p.m. right now on a th this Thursday. It's 1.52 p.m. I've had an applesauce, and I didn't complete the whole applesauce. I got up and took my bariatric vitamins, um, and which they're, they're um, like melts, berry melts, and they are, one is a chewable. My multivitamin with iron is a chewable. Um, you chew it, but the other, the other vitamins are actually, um, melts. You just put them in your mouth and they melt, but the taste is not, it's okay, but it ain't, it ain't all that. So I got applesauce to, um, help me get that down. Um, I'm not real big on smells. I never have been. It's like, everything is amplified to me. Um, and I, as I, I've always been able to smell and taste everything. And so it's amplified to me. And, um, I have to take the applesauce to take the, um, I have to eat the applesauce to take the vitamins. So I've had applesauce and vitamins this morning. I've had about maybe two ounces of water and this protein shake that's still full and I'm sipping on it, but I'm doing my best. Um, for the last two days, I have not been able to get, even get dressed um, to try to do a video. Like I haven't even been able to get to get dressed. And so it's like one day you feel good and then you may wake up the next day and just, you know, it's a bomber. So I'm going to keep on. I did find though, you guys, if you freeze, I didn't freeze this because I just mixed it up um, a few minutes ago. But I did find I do find that if I freeze it and then I get a spoon and eat it, like eat the ice, that it's better for me. I can take it down like faster than drinking it. For some reason, it goes down a lot easier and smoother, and it's not um, like it doesn't hurt. Like if you drink too much, um, like I, I've never experienced eating too much if I'm if I'm eating it with the spoon versus me drinking it. You can drink too much and then it causes like a tightening or. I don't know. It's like a pain kind of in your, um, in here. I don't know. But, um, 
I was just telling my daughter last night, I'm like, I'm really trying to grasp my mind around devoting every day of my life to sipping and, and eating. Like I, um, I fixed some shrimp and some fish yesterday with green beans and I pureed that. And I had a few bites. I had about four bites. And at that point, I couldn't eat anymore. You would get this, like, it'll be a burp. A burp. After about two bites, you might you might get a burp. And then and once you get that burp, you'll kind of feel like the feeling of fullness coming. So, like, at the fourth bite, that's it's a wrap. Like you can't eat, you can't eat after that fourth bite. But um it was hot and um it was so good. It was really good to me and it was hot. And I really wanted to eat it. And it was only like I had a little baby. Like I have two grandbabies and I have their little, you know, little baby dishes. And I got like just a little bit in the little baby dishes, just a couple of spoonfuls in there. And it was like, I'm sure in my mind, I'm saying, I'm sure I'll be able to eat this little portion in this little baby dish. And I took, like I said, four little spoonfuls. I ate the first one, second one, it was okay. Got the burp, started to feel, you know, a little funny here. So then I took another bite, chewed that up, took another bite. At that point, I'm like, I can't do nothing with this. And it was kind of frustrating because I felt at that point like I was kind of hungry, which I haven't been hungry. But at that point, I felt like I was kind of hungry and I needed to eat that. I couldn't eat it. And it was frustrating to me. And then it was like, now I got to wait 30 to 45 minutes or maybe an hour to take another bite. At that point, it's going to be cold. You're not going to want it anymore. And it is just, it's a lot. It's a lot. And um, I don't regret having the surgery though, because um, I there I did it for a good reason. You know, the re my reasoning. I did it to live. So I don't regret having the surgery, but I'm just trying to find different ways that I can cope, um, you know, with um, my previous personality and how I ate and dealt with food to now having to um, to try to eat and, and like nibble all day. It's like, I don't know, but um, I eventually um, ate a few more bites later on that day, yesterday. And um, like, I eventually poured it, I poured the rest of it out. I didn't, um, I didn't finish it. However, I did um, have water and um, I didn't have a protein shake last night. I did have water though. Um, and it was probably about maybe 20 ounces of water that I had um, in a 32 ounce cup because I didn't drink all of it. It was probably about 20 ounces um, that I had. So I've been staying afloat with water um, with water and trying um, to do protein earlier in the day. And if I do it in the afternoon, I most, most, mostly freeze it um, to get it down um, quicker in the afternoons. So it's been hard for me just trying to, um, and I'm like, um, I'm a nail tech, so I work with my hands. And so I'm trying to figure out, I haven't, I've, I've opened my books up, but I haven't really started back taking um, clients yet. And I just, I don't know. I think it's just going to be, and you can't drink out of a straw. So I'm dealing with a lot of nail dust and you can't drink out of a straw. And so now I got to have this protein shake or this water or some type of fluid in my hands at all times sipping. And that's, that's a thing. So I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how, um, and then I'm thinking about doing something else, um, opening up like a different, I'm going down a different avenue, um, something that I had in works, um, as far as, um, making money goes. And I'm thinking like, how am I going to be able to do this if, if my focus is going to be on sipping, constantly sipping, you know, something all day, but I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to learn to do it. Um, but I think that's my biggest, my biggest struggle is to sip because I'm so used to just going through my day, 
doing what I got to do, not thinking about food, not thinking about um, nothing to drink or, you know, I'm so used to doing that until now. It's like I can't go through my day and not think about food. I can't go through my day and not think about something to eat. Uh, I mean, something to drink. I got to think about something to drink to live. Like, I got to think about this. So, Y'all pray for me. That's all I can say. Y'all pray for me. Y'all pray for me. I don't want to deter nobody because I have lost weight and I'm I'm constantly losing weight. I can feel it. I do think I did come to a stall. I am in my second week and I feel like um I did come to um a stall. Um give me just a second, I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, today's the fifth. I'm in my second, um, my second full week. So I do feel like I'm at a stall. I haven't really been weighing myself that much. I don't want to weigh myself um like a lot. So I haven't been weighing myself. Um the last time I weighed was um when I went to the emergency room and I was at 319. Um I don't want to weigh myself until I've seen like a drastic change in my body. I can feel changes in my body every day in my stomach area, in my sides. I can feel um, changes um, and it lets me know that it is worth a while. I can also feel changes in my thighs, um, especially um, when walking. Um, I haven't been going walking that much. You're supposed to walk at least uh, five times a week, um, you know, three to five times a week. I have not been walking um, every day. I have walked, um, I think, two twice i think i walked only twice this week but i just spoke to my nurse excuse me guys i just spoke to my nurse um before i actually started this video and she was like it's okay you don't have to really focus like that on walking um your body is tired and want rest and it's healing so you don't have to really focus like that on um on walking but um just do your best and so that's what I've been doing. I've been doing my best. And I, I only got twice this week. But I do know that I want to um go ahead and start exercising as soon as possible if I can get my energy level up. Because I can tell that my body is like, it's shrinking. And, um... To prevent a whole lot of sagging, I just want to go ahead and start trying to tone tone as I lose as I lose weight. But I don't want to jump the gun, and I'm gonna wait till I go back to the doctor until he released me to you know, so that I'm able to um to exercise. But I don't care how you prepare yourself mentally for um for the surgery. I don't feel like you're gonna be really 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 mentally prepared for like i don't feel like that i don't i don't feel like there's no way that you can be um because um saying something and seeing other people experiences is a lot different than you just actually going through it yourself and once you do go through it yourself um it's just something that you gotta um it's a hurdle that you gotta get over and i'm i'm jumping hurdles right now and um like I say, I don't regret having the surgery. I'm glad that I did have the surgery. Um, I do see changes in my body. I do see changes in the way my clothes fit. I am, you know, dropping dropping weight. But um, I just got to, if I can get the, the um, if I can just make it a habit to sip, to sip, 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 sip all day, like, I feel like then I will be in a better space mentally because right now I'm not like, and it's like, oh my God, I got to sip. Oh my God. It's like, you can't, I can't read a book. I can't watch a movie. I can't, um, preoccupy myself with anything else because if I do, then I forget I, I'm supposed to be sipping. So it's like, um, I feel like it's kind of like invasive at this point. Like, I feel like it's taking over like every aspect of my life. So, um, 
I don't know. It might be kind of selfish of me to feel like that, but I kind of feel like it's invasive at this time because I, I got to just focus on sipping. Sipping, sipping, sipping. So, <sighs> I have to get up every day, you guys, and basically tell myself, you got this. You can do this. Like, I literally have to get up every day and tell myself that. Because if I don't, the days that I did not tell myself, you got this, you can do this, I literally, like, laid around, lounged all day in pajamas. Like, I did not do anything for myself. I did not, um, like, clean up. I didn't even try to cook anything. Like, there has been days where I didn't even fix a puree meal. Like, I just, I'm over it. Like, I'm like... I'm really over it and I'm like, um, you know, just give me some water, you know? And I drank water. I drank water all day. I was like, just give me some water. I was over it. But, um, and like, when your energy is low, like you, you can't. So my daughters helped me out a lot and I have a good support system, but, you're still in this for you. And there's certain things that you got to do for you that other people can't do. Can't nobody else pick up this cup and put it to my lips and make me swallow it but me. So, that's that on it. But I have... Um, I feel like... It'll all be okay after a while. I've talked to some people that's um, farther out than me. Um, one one of my friends is like four and a half years out. Um, and she still says she only eats about, I think she says, um, four to five bites an hour. And I'm like, that's scary. Four to five bites an hour. But I don't know. I don't know about the four to five bites an hour. I'm kind of feeling like if I take four to five bites and I'm full at that point, I ain't coming back in an hour. Like, I'm not coming back in an hour. I don't know. I'm a drinker anyway. I'd rather drink than to eat. I know I can't live the rest of my life off of protein shakes and water. But at this point, I got to do what um, works best for me. And the protein shakes and water, um, I guess, will be my main, my continued fo focus for the next um, week or so. So, um, that's about it, you guys. I hope that helps somebody. Um, I just don't want nobody to have no false um, hope or no false ideas, or no false views, or I don't want to get on YouTube and tell you guys, oh, it's good, I've been doing good, I'm feeling great, and I'm not. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't want, I want you to go into this journey knowing with the conscious mind that there are going to be hiccups in the road, there are going to be bumps in the road, like, you, you there's going to be things that happen that's out of your control, it's going to be things that happen to you emotionally and mentally that you're going to feel like, why, you know, why did I do this? Like the, the time, those times will arise and I'm only in my second week, but I'm, I'm going to keep on posting. I'm going to keep on sharing with you guys how I'm feeling. I'm going to keep on sharing my experiences with you guys because I want you to know the raw truth. And I know everybody's experience is going to be different. Your experience may be different from mine. You may go through it like a breeze. You may be a person that like milk. You may be a person that like milkshakes. You may be a person that likes sweets and it's no problem for you. You know, you may be a person that loves to sip all day. Like it depends on the person. But for me, that is the most traumatic part of it is for me to, to make myself eat all day. And I'm not a person that eat all day. So, I just want to be transparent and I just want people to know, um, you know, what it is that you're getting into because it's not an easy, it's not an easy journey. It's not an easy journey. It's been times that I've cried. 
Like I literally cried and I'm like, oh my God, can this, can I just fast forward myself to next year? Like I actually cried, but, um, after I cried, you know, sometimes it's okay to shed a tear or two. After I cried, I got myself together and I got up, you know, and I got up and I knew, okay, now let's do this. I got to do this. And I went and got my protein shake or I went and got my water and I started, you know, started sipping. I'm not going to sit here and say that I get in 48 ounces of water a day. I'm not going to tell you I get 68 grams of protein a day because I do not. I simply do not. I don't. But I am keeping myself afloat. Like I'm not letting myself go down. I'm keeping myself afloat. So um, I'm probably averaging around maybe 40 grams. Uh, I mean, 40 ounces of, of um, fluids a day um, because I have incorporated some um, no sugar added juices. Like um, I got a cranberry, um, no sugar added cranberry juice. I have a um, no sugar added um, grape juice and I have a, a kiwi strawberry. Most of the juicy juices are no sugar added and I have on um, the ocean spray um, is no sugar. I got that and no sugar added as well. But um, I still don't even drink the juice like that because it's like after surgery, your taste buds change tremendously like you're not gonna want the same things that you wanted uh, prior to surgery it's just you're not and i was a uh, cranberry juice drinker and like i literally can't i can barely get the cranberry juice down it's just the, the taste and everything the consistency of it is just it's different it's like not, not the same but um I am getting better though with the dry mouth because um I know you guys heard when I went to the doctor and I spoke with the doctor, I was having extreme, like extremely dry mouth, but I did notice the more I do hydrate myself, the better um, I'm getting with the dry mouth. So that's a good thing. Um, right now my mouth is kind of dry a little bit, but it's uh, because I'm drinking this protein shake, which is good. This is actually, um, this is actually um the premier uh, protein shake. It's a cinnamon roll and I did dilute it with the eight ounces of skim milk. So it's pretty, it tastes okay. Like it's not bad. The, the None of the protein shakes I feel like are bad tasting. It just tastes like a milkshake to me and I'm not a milkshake person. So, um, you know, like ice cream or something, but um, it's not bad. So if you like those type of things, it'll be good. You know, it'll be good for you to get, to get it down. But um, I've been doing pretty good with the dry mouth um, and just drinking water. So I don't know. That's about it, you guys. I'm not going to keep holding you here. If you've gotten this far in the video, don't forget to like, um, share, comment, and subscribe. I always say comment. I know a lot of people don't um, say comment, but I say I offer, um, I invite you to comment because we, I feel like, um, this is to help people and, um, without interactions, we can't help each other. So, um, I try to get back with you guys as soon as you, um, message me or come in on the video. I try to go ahead and get right back to you guys if I can. Um, I know a lot of you guys, um, a lot of my followers have, um, surgeries planned. They, some of you guys have your dates already. Some of you do not, um, but you're in the process and I'm just like encouraging you to just to go ahead and do whatever it need you need to do um because after all it's for your health like if you if you're doing it for the same reason that I'm I did it and it was for my health for better health I want to live I want to be able to see my grandbabies grow up and I want to be able to just be, to continue being a mother to my kids and to be, you know, being a daughter and one day a wife, you know, and I'm not trying to leave here no time soon. So, um, you know, we have to support each other. Um, so congratulations to you um, on your journeys as well. Um, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep going forward, keep pressing forward. And, um, thank you again. I can't say thank you enough for, um, just tuning in and being supportive to me. Like it means a lot because a lot of times, um, even though we do have the support 
of our families or whatever, it's something different to get outside support. It's just, it's on a different level. So I appreciate you. You know, I do appreciate you guys. So, um, I hope I covered everything, um, that I needed to cover or answered any questions that I needed to, um, to answer, um, you know, but just know that if you do have issues with, um, like anxiety, or if you have issues with, um, just being emotional during this process, or, you know, if you have, um, anything that you needed to discuss, just know once you go through the process and you have an established a relationship with your, with the, um, psychologist, then a psychiatrist, you, um, is it psychologist? Psychologist. I think it's the psychologist. Once you have um, created that initial, um, relationship with them, like during the process, the, if they didn't let you know, I'm letting you know that there should be an open door for you to go back. You know, if you, maybe you don't have um, a supportive family or you don't have anybody that you need to talk to during the process. Uh, I mean, that you can talk to during the process. You can always go back to that psychiatrist and, and speak to, you know, psychologist and speak to them. I don't know which one it is, you guys. And I don't have the paperwork in front of me right now, but, um, you can always go back to them. Mine, let me know. Like, I only went to get, uh, cause I don't feel like I have any mental, um, issues or block or, you know, any problems that I need to just sit down and speak to somebody about like that. But, um, she did let me know, like, um, the, the lady that I saw, the doctor that I saw, um, her name is Tonette Robinson. If you guys are in the Atlanta area, um, she's actually in Marietta to be, um, exact, but she did let me know that if there came a time where I felt like I needed to, um, talk or if I needed that type of support, that the door was always open. And even though like right now I feel like I don't need, need her, the offer was, um, I think the offer was, it was good for her to offer that. You know, I think that was very kind and nice of her to let me know that the door was open. And so that's why I'm letting you guys know that. I don't know if you're, you know, if you got to that point where you've seen the psychologist already or whatever, but if, if they didn't invite you or let you know that that door was open, I'm letting you know that that door is open. And if not with that particular doctor, there's always other places that you can go to, to seek out help if you need it. You know, closed mouth don't get fed. And if you need something, if you want, if you, if there's a need that you have, you got to be willing to open your mouth and ask, um, and ask for the help. And even, um, like if you're in the Atlanta area or if it's something that I can do for you or if it's a direction that I can point you in, don't hesitate to ask me because I don't mind helping. Um, if I have the resources to offer you, you know, I will offer you, offer them to you gladly. And if not, like I've told you in previous videos, as soon as I see my doctor or as soon as I see Kelly, my nurse, or, um, you know, or any other contacts that I have, I'll get back with you and I'll, you know, I'll help you the best way that I can. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, you guys. It's been great. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful to you guys. Enjoy this Thursday and you guys have a blessed one. Bye-bye.